Hey everyone, welcome to Pawfology. So right now I'm on my way to get some coffee at uh, the coffee shop up here, Caffeine Coffee. Are you having a good day? Having a good week? I hope so. My Monday hasn't been too bad. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, not that cold right now, so that's very nice. It's, uh, it's a little weird because it was so cold last week. It, you know, I guess it's gonna maybe get warmer this week. Who knows? I don't know. So, but yeah, I'm just coming over here, getting a cup of coffee, getting outside, walking, and I don't know if I should walk through this. This is a lot of uh, slush. I'm, gonna, I'm going to, anyways. Um, well, Last night I watched uh, Allen vs. Pharaoh on HBO. It's about Woody Allen uh, and just all the weird stuff he's done. He married, okay, I don't know if she was his adopted daughter, but he did something with like marrying his girlfriend's adopted kid. Really weird. And it's just like exposing, it's just an exposing Woody Allen documentary. So that was really good. It came out last night and I've been, and I watched that, really enjoyed it. Um, it is really sad for, you know, the people sharing those stories. And I come to just find, like I just, you know, I really don't have an opinion on it, on them. I mean, I'm not gonna spoil it too much. I mean, there's so many more episodes to come. So this is a multiple episode series and, uh, I guess Woody went to counseling for his relationship with his adopted daughter. Weird, weird stuff. So he was in counseling for a few years about it, or a couple years, I think. I don't know. So I watched that, and uh, that's about all. I've been, I've been watching some also uh, like crime uh, stories on YouTube, just random ones. I, I don't even know which ones I've been watching. So. That's what I did last night. And I also went to Costco yesterday and I got some stuff for lunch for today. So I had some lunch and I went to work. So not much has really happened. Uh, I have my first official class this week. So I get to do that. I go to class in person or not in person. Well, in person, online, in person. I've been doing this Excel class and now I'm starting a normal class. So it's like a management class. And I'm looking forward to that. I gotta read a bunch of documents before I go. So I will probably be doing that uh, later tonight, reading through it. It's PDF documents. So that's what I'll be doing later and I also, I know this is, you're probably wondering why am I going to caffeine coffee when I'm about to tell you this. So I went to Costco and I saw this bag of coffee. I don't know what brand it is. Maybe I'll show it in the video later, but it was $9.99 and it was probably two pounds of it. And I made it this morning and it was very good. I was like, wow, I, this is very surprising. It was very oily. So what you know that's a ton of coffee it might even be more than two pounds i don't know i'm going to make cold brew with it and that's what i find is the best way to utilize enormous amounts of coffee i mean yeah i would love to be able to keep it for a long time but i'll probably vacuum seal some of it and then make cold brew so and then later i'll show you my my sourdough i fed it last night it's a little watery, so I think I'm going to change my ratio to water to kind of meet the needs of the sourdough, but it, it's coming along very nicely. It has a, a lot more tang to it, a lot more of that sourdough tang. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. You know, as uh, I think Peter Mon would say, I don't know if he says this, does he say this? It's just not that deep. It's just not that deep. That's what today's been. What I'm, not, nothing, nothing too deep. I don't know if he says that. Did I just make that up? I have no idea. So, okay, I'm going inside. This dude's staring at me in the window. Um, 
Oh, yesterday when I was at the uh, donut shop, I um, I was filming, and uh, one of the guys, uh, like older gentleman, came up to me and was like, "Whoa, what is that thing?" He goes, "I'm tripping out. What is that? It's so small." So he didn't know you know, the, my, the camera I use pretty small, so he was very curious about it. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going inside now. Oh, you know what? So here's another thing. There's, okay, there's another donut shop. It's really a bakery called Long's Bakery, and it's pretty famous in Indy. So I think I'll go to that place in the next month or so. Um, it's kind of, they kind of took the, okay, it's kind of like the donuts they serve there are warm. So you go there, it's kind of like Krispy Kreme donuts but when I had them they didn't taste like Krispy Kreme so I think it's more of like a local place that people just love but uh, they were warm and you know I'm sure some of their bakery items are really good also someone mentioned go to Tim's bakery or Tim's donuts Emily and I will go to Tim's donuts uh, next time we we are able to so we'll check Tim's donuts out and yeah okay now I'm going into caffeine coffee Good man. So I'm back from Caffeine Coffee and I just want to say they're so nice in there. Uh, one of the guys that works there uh, asked me how the vlog was going and I told him it's going well. You know, I've made a hundred plus videos and he took my information down and just, you know, chatting. So I really like Caffeine Coffee. He was telling me about a TikTok that they made yesterday with someone and it has 20,000 views. I love that. I love that so yeah you know customer service and just being nice goes a long ways at least for me you know it, especially when you live in a city where there's so many options like I don't have to you know get your coffee I can walk a couple minutes further down and get a different cup of coffee so I feel like in bigger cities customer service goes a very long way so same in small cities same in small towns it's pretty windy I don't know if you can hear that in my town in Danville Virginia boy if you do anything wrong you will be grilled like if you're if you're rude to someone the whole town will know and no one will eat at your restaurant so you say something to someone you don't want to do you don't want that to happen people will be mad it's just a bad it's it's a it's very unhealthy uh, environment in Danville when it comes to like criticism so you know or you, if you, you know let's say you say you tell someone off on accident not accident that never that probably doesn't happen often but you say something to the wrong person the whole family will just like boycott everything from you and essentially turn the town against you real weird real weird but you know maybe that's good no, it's probably not good. It's probably not good. So, yeah, well, I'm on my way back. I'm going to get back to work. Got a little bit, uh, a longer time on until I got to be done with my lunch break. And this car just let me go by. Don't know if he's going to park right here. He has a uh, Hyundai Genesis, or now it's just a Genesis. You know, I remember when those Genesis used to be little sports cars. It wasn't that long ago. Now it's kind of like Honda's uh, luxury brand. Now, you know, you got all these, uh, you have all these cars. Well, you have uh, Honda making the Apple car, possibly. So that's interesting. We'll see how that goes. Because that could be really good for Honda. So... You got so many cars coming out with electric vehicles. You know, it, I might have mentioned this before, but Bill Gates was talking about uh, going fully electric, being green and stuff like that. And uh, he said the car industry is probably going to be the easiest industry. The harder industry is going to be, uh, I mean, even things like concrete and pavement, you know, making sure you're doing that in a, I guess, environmentally friendly way. So we'll see did you see the new will ferrell uh 
the new Will Ferrell commercial that Cadillac did. Very interesting. It's very funny too. So it's I think it I think it's new. Yeah. Well I'm going inside now. Um it's very windy. I hope you can hear me. There's a oh I do want to mention this. This is just a random thought as well. So do any of you know what a Honda S2000 is? It's like a little sports car, it kind of looks like a Miata. Well, collectors are saying it might be the car to collect now because one just sold a couple weeks ago for $115,000. Crazy. It's kind of like a new Supra price, you know? Or it's probably, Supras might be way more expensive than that, especially when they're in perfect condition like that Honda S2000. So, okay, I'm going. I'll talk to you very soon. Goodbye. Hey everyone, so I'm back in the apartment. Emily and I just had dinner and uh, it's it's nighttime, so I gotta get this vlog up. Um, I just wanna talk about a few things. So I mentioned some coffee that I got at Costco and here is the coffee. It's Sahara Gold. Uh, it's a medium roast, uh, bright citric acidity, chocolate notes. I've tasted some blueberries. You know, for $9.99, hey, it's a great deal. And um, I liked it. I thought it tasted great. I made it, this, I brewed it this morning. Uh, it tasted good, you know? So I think I'm gonna use this for cold brew. I'm probably gonna make, I don't know, maybe the majority of this package as cold brew. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do with that. And then also at uh, Costco, I got these Parm Crisp. Have any of you had these? They are pretty delicious. They're just Parmesan. They're very salty as you might uh, think they would be. I mean, Parmesan in general is a very salty cheese. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's a, it's just, yeah, very salty. And then it has the everything bagel seasoning on it. And um, I liked it. I like it though. You know, it's a nice little, it's a nice little snack you can put in salads. It says salad soups or sandwiches. So um, also this is just another random thing. Here's some steak seasoning I use. I might've mentioned this before. This is some of the best steak seasoning I've ever had. It's Urban Accents Chicago Steaks, Chicago Steak and Chop. So I will, I bought some steak at Costco and I'm gonna cut it up and vacuum seal it and put that seasoning on it before I vacuum seal it. Uh, it's, it's just my go-to steak seasoning. So yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Emily and I had some dinner. We had bison, uh, ground, we, we had some ground bison. Do any of you eat bison? Um, it was mainly just like, I saw it at Costco, whatever. I got some different than ground beef, so. It was good, you know, it, it was fine. Like it ha it's it's very bison-y, you know? But bison tastes very similar to ground beef. So I like it though, not too bad. I don't cook with it often. So yeah, but hey, if you're still watching, comment down below bison. Do you eat bison? Do you like bison? Let me know down below. Some of you may be vegan or vegetarian, so you don't eat that type of stuff and that's okay. So. If you are, no, never mind. I'm not gonna get into that. So um, I'm gonna show you my sourdough, uh, but before I get into that, is there anything else I wanna mention? Um, well, you know, yesterday I, I did talk about the Woody Allen versus Farrow or Farlow, I don't know. I don't know what it's called, but it's a really good documentary. And I, I, I mentioned I don't have an opinion on it and I really don't. I kind of decide to choose against Woody Allen personally, cause I mean, I mean, I'm just going to at this point. So yeah, I, I kind of believe the victims and I have no reason not to believe the victims. So that's, that's where I'm at at this point. You know, that might change, who knows? Also, I really haven't watched any Woody Allen movies, maybe a few. And I, you know, I grew up in a world that I just never watched Woody Allen. I don't really have an opinion, so. But I definitely am looking forward to the HBO documentaries because I think HBO makes amazing documentaries. I like the Tiger documentary that came out. If you haven't watched that, that's really good. And uh, whatever else, you know, Baby God, that was very interesting. Um, 
There's a few other, I know Peter's mentioned one. It's like, I don't know. I, I forget what it's called, but I watched part of that one and that was good. So, but yeah, so that's all we're doing. You know, it's the end of the day, we had dinner. I'm gonna work on some stuff, do some, read through some PDFs. I think, I think I'm reading about CVS and something like healthcare or something, I don't know, I don't know. I haven't started it, I just glanced at it. So, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, now I'm gonna show you my sourdough and I guess you'll get a look at that. It is a little watery, so I added, I don't know, I gotta add more flour than water. I just wanna get it to a good texture, you know? Like, I have in my mind what I want it to be at, so I'm gonna get it to that point. So, okay, that's all, I'll talk to you in just a second, or you'll see my sourdough while I get it set up. Okay, bye. So here's the sourdough. You can see some bubbles. It's definitely active. It's, you know, lots of little bubbles. I'm gonna put 30 grams of water in it. And because it's just so uh, watery, I'm only gonna put about 70 grams of, or I'm gonna put 70 grams of flour and we'll see what happens with that. So here we go. There, there's 70 grams of flour. And I gotta stir this up, so give me a second to get a spoon. So I think this will make the, the starter a little thicker and feed it a little bit more. So I'm gonna stir this really fast. So I'm actually gonna put another 30 grams of water, or uh, I'll do 25 and we'll stir it up from there. And I think that should put me where I want it to be for the, star for the starter. Well, I'm no sourdough expert, but uh, that feels right to me. It's probably uh, maybe a 30 gram difference between water and flour. So we'll just see what happens, see how it reacts. So that was my sourdough, as you can see, uh, you know, it's coming along. It should, it should double in size by tomorrow in like 24 hours, we'll see, but it's coming along nicely. And then, you know, once I feel like it's uh, good enough, it's, you know, I have enough built up, then we'll get into making sourdough. And I'm gonna, you know, I'll make it, I'll proof it. And one of my favorite ways to proof my bread, I know this is very drama, but uh, I got this for Christmas one year and it is this Broad and Taylor bread proofer. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a like it's a legit bread proofer. So essentially what this thing is, you definitely do not need this by any means. You can you can proof your bread in the fridge. You can, you know, you don't really need this. This is more of like a luxury item. It's very drama again but I have it. So I got it for Christmas one time. It's essentially a slow cooker. It's a warmer. It helps you rise your bread and you, you don't have to use it for just bread. You can use it for, you can, I guess you can use it as a slow cooker. So you can put a pan in it and it will bring up everything to a certain temperature. It's a slow cooker essentially. So instead, you know, if you wanted to get something that's a warmer, you know, that gets to a certain temperature, you could buy a, um, a plant warmer. I don't know if any of you have seen those. They're, it's literally just a mat that's kind of like a heating pad, you know? You, the heating pad you would use to heat up your feet or whatever. You can get one of these mats that are for plants and they get to a very specific temperature and you can just, proof your bread that way. Or you can just put your bread in the fridge overnight and I've done that and it works perfectly fine. You know, this is just a, you know, interesting way of doing it. And so that's what I do. And some, you know, people, people use this thing for yogurt, for cheeses, for tempeh, for garlic. You know, you can make some uh, garlic, black garlic mush or whatever it's called. So it's, yeah, it's very interesting and it's collapsible. I really like Broad and Taylor. I don't even know if that's how you say it, Broad and Taylor. Yeah, so 
I really like that. They also have a, a collapsible or a foldable dehydrator. That's really cool that I would like to get someday, but at the same time, I'm like, I will never use it as much as, you know, some people. I grew up with a dehydrator and I barely used it. So, but my mom used it, you know, you can, you can make beef jerky in it. You can make dehydrated strawberries, blueberries, fruits, raisins, but I don't think I'll be getting that anytime soon. Um, people also use this to make kombucha. So it's just a slow proofer or a slow cooker and a proofer. So, but yeah, so I'll make the sourdough in the next probably week or so depending on how my sourdough starter goes, and we'll go from there. I've always been tempted to buy the, you know, the 200 or 300 year old sourdough starter off eBay. So maybe I'll do that, you know, it's only like $8 to get something that's like, oh, it's 300 years old. So I think that would be interesting. Yeah, people you make tempeh with this, which is like a fermented soybean. I've never had it. I don't think I have. No, I, I have, I have. I think Chipotle has it, maybe. So yeah, well, that's what I'm doing. That's my sourdough. That's my thoughts on sourdough. That's my thoughts on bread. I am definitely not a professional sourdough maker and I do not claim that. Like this may not be the best setup. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, that's everything for today. Emily and I will be uh, back for Tuesday Tea Talk. Did I tell people to, Emily, did I tell people to say bison or anything? I think I did. Okay, I, re I remember now, sorry, it's been a second. Yeah, so comment down bison if you're still watching. Um, and that's everything. So I'll talk to you in a little bit tomorrow. Emily and I will do Tuesday Tea Talks and it's gonna be really fun. Um, it's gonna be, yeah, so thank you for everyone who's been watching this video and I'll see you tomorrow. If no one's told you this, you are loved and this world is a better place because you are here. I'll see you tomorrow. You'll see Emily tomorrow and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.